Hi everyone, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm doing a winter holiday collaboration with my good friend Chef Tovia from Cooking with Tovia here on YouTube. And he also has another channel called La Sugary Sweet. And I'm going to show you how to put together this beautiful winter wonderland memory bracelet and Chef Tovia will show you how to make this wonderful winter holiday white chocolate velvet cake that is not only moist but has an amazing flavor. Chef Tovia puts his heart and soul into everything he makes and he uses simple everyday items that are probably already in your cupboard. So I'll put Chef Tovia's links in the description box below, as well as in the first comment and on my blog. And if you could please do me a favor and show the chef some love by subscribing to his awesome channel and telling him Happy Bird sent you, I would be very grateful. So with that said, we'll move on and I'll show you how I put this little memory wire bracelet together. Okay, so the first thing I did was I separated my beads and I put the, the beads on this little paint palette here. And believe it or not, all of these beads are very inexpensive. Um, I use a lot of the check glass beads, the AB check glass beads, in place of crystals. This was a whole strand at Michael's. It, it was the red label, so it was the least expensive. But they turn out really pretty, and I'll make sure to have a complete list of everything that you'll need in the first comment below. I'll pin it to the top, and you can also find it on my blog as well at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com. Just click on the picture of this bracelet project, and the page will open up for you, and um, you'll be able to see the list. So, we have it in two places. <laughs> Now, um, I am using some 4 millimeter little daisy spacers. These daisy spacers are a bright silver, and you can buy these by the ton um, on eBay. And, of course, I have my little 6 millimeter um, AB Crystal Rondelle spacers, and you can buy these really inexpensive on uh, eBay, and you can also find them at Michael's. Okay? So I won't go into the details right here and bore you to death with that. So I'm just going to move on. And um, like I said, the list will be in the first comment below. Now what I like to do is I like to take a piece of wire and I like to play around and kind of fiddle with my beads and decide which pattern I'm going to use. And the reason why I like putting it on wire is because when I find a pattern I like, then I just loop it at the top and I can set it down just like this and just copy this pattern and then move it and copy the pattern and move it down and copy the pattern. For me, it's so much easier that way. Uh, I, I have to keep things organized in my head and that's um, how I do it for me. Now, I also like this because what you can do is you can slip a jump ring through the top like this and close it up. And you can get one of these little rings here, the binder rings, that you can uh, pull apart like that. This is just a little one. But you can slip your pattern on here and you can collect all the different patterns that you used for your bracelets or necklaces and you'll have them all in one place so you can just um, look through all your little patterns and decide which ones you want to use in the future. So that's just a, an idea. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay out my pattern and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to cut the memory wire. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have my beads laid out. Now, I may need more for this bracelet, which I probably will, but that's okay. I'll just set them out as I go. One thing I forgot to mention to you before we start cutting our wire is that many years ago, when I took my first beading class, our teacher told us that when we're making patterns, to use sets of three, five, or seven, it, it has to be an odd number because the odd numbers actually make the bracelet look the prettiest. So what I did today was I made 19. <laughs> now it's an odd number, but it's still going to be very pretty even though it's a large amount. And I also included um, the count or the bead spacers in that count, okay? So I have 19 beads and bead spacers. And another good thing to remember is use the largest bead in the middle as your focal bead, okay? And that will also make your bracelet really pretty. So with that said, let's move on and we'll cut the wire. Okay, so this pattern will be in three different places so you won't have any problem finding it. I'll place this in the um, first comment below this video and I'll also place it in the show more drop down bar below this video. And the third place is this will also be on my blog. Okay, so you have three different places where you can access the sizes and the names of the beads and the pattern that I'm using. So with that said, let's move on. Okay, so I generally use the Beadsmith memory wire in the two and a fourth inch diameter. However, I ran out yesterday, so I had to make a quick run to Michael's last night. And the only memory wire they had was by Beadalon. And it says large bracelet, so I knew that was the two and one fourth inch diameter, although it didn't say it. And of course you want the round, okay? Now, I bought this Beadalon wire, memory wire, probably oh six years ago or so at Michael's and I wasn't happy with it back then it didn't hold its shape and I just didn't like it and that's when I found the Beadsmith memory wire however when I bought this package last night and I opened it I was really pleasantly surprised Beadalon has really stepped up since then and this is very nice sturdy wire so they made a lot of changes to their line um, during that time and I really like this wire so um, I'm going to show you how to cut it I want my bracelet to be three loops or I want three loops to show on the front okay so we're gonna pull this out but we're not gonna count this as a loop alright we're just gonna pull it out and we're gonna count this as the first loop second loop third loop okay now, I'm going to put my hand right here. I'm going to pretend all this back here doesn't exist. And I want to move this up to the top where you can see that first piece right there. Now you're going to cut on the last loop about an inch or so past this first piece in the opposite direction okay and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my memory wire cutters and I'm not measuring it when I say an inch I'm just giving an estimate and I'm going to cut that and you're going to need some memory wire cutters or memory wire shears because if you try using any of your jewelry making um, tools such as your flush cutter your nipper tool um, you will ruin them right away. This wire is tempered and so you really need um, these cutters right here. Like that. And I will have a link to these um, on my blog if you just click on the picture of this bracelet as to where you can find them. And you can also find these at, at any um, craft store if you want to use your coupon. Okay. So as you can see, it's roughly an inch past each other in the opposite direction. And if you go to the front, you have one, 
two, three loops. Okay, so it'll look just like that from the front. This is actually the back because that's where we're going to loop it and put our charms to hang and dangle on the back part of our wrist. Okay, all right, so let's move on. Okay, so I'm going to be taking these Beadalon uh, memory wire finishing pliers, which I love. It's a fairly um, brand new tool. And um, I will have a link for this if you're curious as to where I got this. And I will have that link on my blog. You just click on the picture of the memory bracelet and the page will open up and it'll be right there for you. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be using the smallest peg and I'm going to make a loop to face the outside of the bracelet. If you make the loop inward like this, which I have seen some people do, it's not going to lie very nicely on your wrist. So we want to make it outward and so this is what we're going to do just like this. Now I'm closing this completely. Some people like to leave it partially open like this and then come back later on and put their charms on and then close it. I don't like doing that for the simple reason when you're um, finished up with your bracelet it's difficult because the beads always want to slide down here and um, it can really uh, mess things up <laughs> when you're trying to finish off your bracelet and um, at the same time make sure that the beads are together. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I want to make sure that touches and it does and see you can see the loop is facing outwards and then the charms will dangle on it. Now we're only doing one end course because we're going to be beating from this end. All right? Okay. So I'm going to hold it just like this in my hand with all of this behind my fingers. And I'm going to start with a little daisy spacer. Now I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do all of this, but I will thread a couple of rows on and then I'll do the rest off camera then we'll come back and and finish this up. Now this is a very relaxing craft to do and it's something that you can do while you're sitting and watching TV or listening to your favorite radio station. So it's just as simple as this. This is a great project for people who are just starting to learn how to bead. This is a big confidence builder project. And if you're starting to bead, I think the two easiest things to start um, doing to build your confidence are memory wire bracelets, simple ones such as this, not elaborate ones, and the stretchy bracelets. And as soon as you master those two things, I think the, the um, next easiest project to master would be simple earrings. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> okay, so we have our first row on. So I'm just going to do the second row and when I'm finished doing my second row of patterns, Then, um, then I'll do the rest off camera. Oh no! Did you see what I just did? 
Can you believe it? Look at that. Aye. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, so I will just continue beating on this side here. Just like this. And when I finish this one row, then I will do the rest off camera, but I'll show you what it looks like when I finish the first two rows on here. Just like this, we're almost done. This row here. I love the color of these beads too. Real pretty lavenders and aquas. Reminds me of icy colors. Okay. And I will continue beading, but I'm just going to slide this on around like this. This is the fun part when you really start seeing the bracelet take shape. But I just wanted to show you how it's looking. Okay. Very pretty. All right. Very delicate. All right. And I'll continue doing this off camera and I'll be back and we'll finish the rest. Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting towards the end of this bracelet. Now you're going to have to leave a half an inch here to make your loop. So what happens when you don't have enough room to finish off your bracelet with a complete pattern? Well, this is what I do. I look at what I started with at the very beginning, and I kind of guesstimate um, how many of these beads I can fit on here. And I'm thinking I can probably fit enough beads here and leave enough space from about this um, large vocal bead on down. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with this bead right here and it will give it kind of a, a break in the bracelet. I'm just going to keep stringing because you want to end up the last bead especially you want to end up with what you started with and it'll look really pretty Okay, and that's a pretty good estimate right here. And when I finish this off, I'll show you that it'll still look really nice. Okay, you won't be able to tell. So I'm going to measure this last end part, make sure it's a half an inch. And I actually have a hair over a half an inch, so I'm going to take my memory wire cutters. I'm just going to snap this off like that and measure it again. You're pretty close to a half an inch, I think. All right. So I'm going to make sure all of my beads um, are pushed down. It's nice and firm. Now remember, when you make this loop, you're going to want to make it on the outside. Okay? We're going to use um, the small peg. And 
And I'm just going to keep rolling this one to the end like that. Okay. And it makes kind of like a a little bit of a split ring up there, which is fine. Okay. Looks very nice now. Now we're going to have to hang the charms from this, okay? We'll do that next. Okay, so what I did was I purchased some of these snowflake charms off a seller on eBay. I think I paid a dollar something for ten of them. And I'll go ahead and give you the link in case you're interested on my blog. Just click on the picture of the bracelet and it will be there. But what I did was I wanted to bling them up a little bit. And I had remembered that I bought this package of iron-on Swarovski crystals at Michael's about four years ago. <laughs> and they were 60% off, so I picked up a package. And they've been sitting in my drawer ever since. So I just took a little bit of E6000 and I put it on a toothpick and then I scraped it on the back of the crystal and then I just pressed these right in the middle and I allowed them to dry overnight and I think they turned out really pretty. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take two 7mm jump rings and I bought a whole big package of these in the bead landing section at Michael's and they were $2.99 and they are the best jump rings and um, they're very strong gauge so I like that. So I'm just going to open this and slip on the snowflake. And then I'm just going to slip it on here and close it. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top. Now you can use smaller jump rings if you want, but I, love, I really like these. See, we have this beautiful bracelet. And with memory wire, it's nice. It never loses its shape. You just pull it open and wrap it around your wrist, and it springs right back. And you take it off the same way. And I have to tell people this because sometimes when I make the memory wire bracelets, I'll have a person hold it like this and try to slip their hand through it. So they're unaware that this is tempered wire. You know, I, I just thought of something. I can make a matching set of earrings using the same method as these charms. That would be really pretty. And then put it on an ear wire or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. <clears throat> put a little bit of 6,000 here. Pick up the crystal. Can it spin the toothpick <laughs> in the glue? That. Set it in the middle. And I am going to lay this flat below my tabletop fan. I'm going to leave this for quite a while, at least overnight. Spin the toothpick. Put a little bit on. Set this 
right here in the middle. Make sure it's in the middle. You don't want any wonky looking snowflakes. Okay, and I'm going to allow that to dry as well. And then we'll just attach some simple ear wires. All right, so the little snowflakes have dried, so I'm going to take an air wire and open it up. Just slide this on and close it up. Do the same thing with this one. And close that up. So now we have our two matching earrings to go with our beautiful little bracelet. So I really hope you liked this little bracelet and thank you so much for watching and once again please don't forget to subscribe to my friend Chef Tovia from Cooking with Tovia and God bless each and every one of you. Bye bye.